What's up guys, my name is AOTXPartX and this is the second episode of Gameplay Breakdown. And today I'm gonna analyze a friendly match between KCITS and FKE. And well, the main job of Chad Peru and myself was to uh, be around North Flag the entire round. And well, this is kind of uh, predictive on the enemy part, as you can see, Timo just took us out with his remote charge because well, he was guessing that we are gonna try to attack North Flag as soon as possible and well, paid off for him. Yeah. So, at the end of this video, I'm gonna break down every mistake with possible solution in this video. And I'm gonna pause here real quick to assess the situation and break it down for you. Well, on the main map, you can see that there's one guy outside of the building, two guys inside of the window, which I'm looking at right now, and by the boat, there's some guys around. I can't count them right now because there's the a center flag symbol like overlapping them, and I just can't see it how many there are, but I think it was two. And my buddy, Jet Peru, is dead, and I'm at Sun Health myself, so it's a disadvantage for us, definitely. And I'm just gonna shoot at this window to prevent them from peeking out and killing me. I mean, even a rock would kill me <laughs> this time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And the downside to this like thought process is that as soon as I shot at them I don't know whether chat is spawned uh, is respawned again and I'm out of ammo with my primary gun and I'm basically fucked at long ranges so in this situation I just can't hope that nobody rushes me and we'll see how it goes yeah two guys rushing me and I switched to the shotgun too late, so yeah, I died. Didn't pay it off like I expected it would, but anyways. And it's sad that you can't uh, hear us communicating because it would make things a lot easier for you to understand. But right now, uh, Chad is really low and he told me to fall back because well, he's low on health and is getting rushed and I think that he thinks that he won't survive it he did survive it so didn't matter but right now uh, we are on no flag again and well uh, right there you have to be able to trust your teammates to hold you back. Otherwise, this would this would have been suicide to look in the other direction of the enemy spawn. But well, with Chad Peru, everybody, you don't have to worry about your back as much. And right there, like I said, Chad Peru is your buddy. Because of that, I was able to take those those three guys out actually. And if other guys shooting at him at them at the same time. I would have been dead 10 times out of 10. And right there, I called in the Elbas Muller to prevent enemies to get to North Flag too early because well, there are three other lanes to cover too besides this big middle spawn area, whatever. And yeah. So, back to North Flag again. And yeah, right there I see a guy in the minimap and decide to peek, but well, normal ammunition, tank stands, and a good enemy, not a good combination for you. So, well, yeah, good kill on his part, kind of bad luck on my part, but anyways. Right there, um, 
you might as well figure it out yourself that I will die here every now, every second I mean, and uh, I'm gonna say something to this situation, to these types of situations at the end of this video, but as you can see, I'm shooting at, I was shooting at two enemies, Nimat and another guy, but uh, the reason I turned about the corner was because I saw a lot of guys on the minimap. But what I didn't saw is this demo to the right rushing me. So, bad luck on my part. It was just bad positioning, I would say. And for me, it is deserved to die in this situation. So, yeah. Not more to say about this. You just got to be aware of crossface situations or oh, I'll mention it later in the end of the video anyways. Um I don't know what was, what was going on there, I think it was lag, I don't know. But anyways, back to North Flag again. Uh well Remo Charge told Scotsman not to go there, but it was too late. And Right there, yeah. Not much to say. King tank sense A12, short range, normal ammunition, ammunition, as before. Uh, yeah. And right there, there's I think another mistake coming up very soon. Uh, yeah. So, right now, uh, you can see the top right corner, my body is dead, and to the right of the screen, you can see the name, who killed the body, Timur, and on the minimap, you can see that Timur is behind me, so, this is a death, this is like a death sentence, like, Timur and behind you, it's, not a good thing. And what I should have done in this situation is turn around uh, turn around and kill Timo at first because as you can see uh Timo is behind me and uh Juegos Vivos, the body of mine, doesn't look in my direction right now, so Timo is definitely bigger like more dangerous target. And I didn't realize it soon enough, and I took out Sniper instead of Teamer, and got my face blown off by Teamer. So yeah, bad decision making on my part again. I mentioned this grenade throwing thingy later in the video again. Yeah. So as this situation. Yeah. Right now, Timur is on the Musa, and Musa is a nasty little skull streak because you can cause massive de devastation on enemies. So if you're good with it. So, now I know that there's at least one demo on North Flag, so I switched to Heavy Hitters. And, yeah. So, there's one kill. And, yeah. Musa took me out. Didn't work out like I expected it to do. But, anyways. Uh, right now, Chad and myself were told to secure the building before running towards North Flag because, as you said earlier, the window on top is a good, like, head glitch spot, or just a good spot to cover North Flag. So, we just 
I have to make sure that we hold this position before moving our north flag again. Unless we want our face blown off again. And... Yeah. Right now, or every second you will see a helicopter similar pop up left side. And yeah, there it is. The Apache of Timor. So for me and uh, for Chad and myself, it's not too big of a danger because we're on the side of a building, and yeah, you can't shoot inside of a building with the Apache, but it's a little bit harder to do. So, again, same as before, like a preventive mortar strike on the way to North Flag, and yeah. So, we're still in the building, and right now, my job would have been to secure North Flag, but since my body died and there were two demos moving up on me, yeah. I had to take the risk to and engage those two demos. Did I, but anyways, I can respawn. So, yeah. Again, switching to heavy this because I was thinking that there is going to be a demo, a north flag, and guess what? I was right. Two demos actually, three demos, made the mistake of rushing him. This I will cover at the end of the video too. And if you uh, heard this beeping noise in the background, it was just my battle lock. Anyways, nothing important. So, well, I don't know why I turned over to center flag. And right there, shot too late. Yeah, nothing. Not much more to say about this death right here. So right now the Apache popped up and I switched to heavy hitters instantly because it's easier to shoot down an Apache with heavy hitters than it is with normal rounds, common sense I would say. So yeah, it's pretty easy to shoot down Apaches with 8 guys communicating and yeah. Right here I got lucky for three much not blowing it up and Zulu not tomahawking me. Yeah. And right there. Yeah, just another kill on the flag. Another UAV up and Another, at least two guys coming towards North Flag now, and well, as you can see on the screen, uh, the flag is being taken, e uh, even though I'm on the flag. So, this means that, well, the rule for flags is the team with plus one guy secures the sector unless they die common sense I would say. So right now I know that there are at least two guys on the flag with me and I'm just gonna stay behind this little shed on the left screen, left part of the screen I, was, I wanted to say and just make sure that either A, Jade, uh, Chad is flanking him like he's doing right now and kills those two guys standing somewhere around the corner. At least I assume that they are there. So, or wait for them to come around the corner. This I'll cover later in the video too. So, yeah. So yeah, the round is coming to an end. I caught in another small strike, but this is about it. And yeah, 
So now to the mistakes I made in this video breakdown. As you can see on the scoreboard, I did 21 and 13, which is pretty good, considering that the enemy team is such an organized team, like FKE is. And if you play a match like this, you have to uh, be able to rely on your teammates to get you back. And I would consider both teams as trustworthy. Yeah. But, I mean, Chad Baru, Scotsman, Spawn Killers, and Camp, Deadly on Hughes, Tammy, Nias. This uh, nice little team, I would say. And Neymar, Juegos Vivas, his buddy, uh, and it is, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Zulu, King, Timur. Pretty good team as well. So, like, even more important between a team is communication, even more important than uh, being able to trust your teammates to avenge you, save you, whatever. So, well, early in the game, where uh, me and Scotsman were running towards Snowflake and I saw the Remo charge lying down on the floor. Well, I said I told him, but it was too late. Maybe he would have survived if I would have said it like two seconds earlier. I don't know. This is just an example for communication. Or the no another situation would be, would have been uh, where Chad told me to fall back instead of waiting for a respawn on him. Just another example. And. Now, to the next point actually covers um, minimap awareness and slash map knowledge, uh, lanes you have to cover, and crossfire situations. So what I mean by that is uh, the situation where right at the start where I was shooting at the empty window to prevent enemies peeking out. So, well, this is just because of I saw some guys on the minimap, and I was aware of my heart, you know, health, ammo, and stuff. And yeah, also about those two guys next to the boat. Just be aware of your minimap as much as possible and know what part of the map you're looking at. I mean, it should be common sense to, uh, to tell, like, if you're inside of a building and there's a guy a little bit further out, you know he's outside, but the question is, where exactly is he outside? Is he to the left, to the right, behind the head teacher spot? Those are the things you have to be able to tell just from looking at the minimap, and I know this sounds really hard to manage, but it comes with experience, and yeah. And now to the next thing is l which lanes. I mean, be aware of the lanes you have to cover to prevent a crossfight a situation, because crossfight situations are deadly, like deadly. And I can't stress it enough; they are deadly. <laughs> So, uh, just keep in mind that there are more angles of exposure you can get shot from than you, than you know. Just assume that you can get shot from almost every angle. So, yeah. For, that, uh, for this reason, I called in the airburst models all the time on this little area in front of their spawn if you run towards north flag and this is something I like to call either A aggressive defending or passive atta attacking it basically is the same thing but just with another name 
aggressive defending is more like if you know that there's a guy around the corner you rush him and risk getting shot and passive attacking variant would be to wait around the corner and peek him as soon as he comes around so this just depends on uh, how good your enemies are how good yourself are and just level of confidence I would say I prefer to uh, be a passive attacker I would say I mean it's like playing safe and sometimes playing safe is better than uh, being too jealous and or be too confident and just die with no sense behind it. So, yeah. And another good example for minimap awareness and uh, passive attacking would have been the one time where I killed Nimad but got shot up by a um, demo. Because if I would have checked the minimap once more before I turned the corner, or at least look at the screen, I don't know whether I was looking at the screen or minimap. No, so yeah. I should have seen either A, the demo on the screen, or the demo on the minimap. Either way, I would have uh, peeked around the corner just to be able to see the demo and shoot him up before I turn the corner completely and try to kill him out. No. It's just you have to set your enemies in like a ranked um, damage level, if that makes sense. Just like I did with Timur and Juegos Vivas. Timur in my back and Juegos Vivas not looking at me in front. I made the mistake of shooting a sniper guy in front of me uh, instead of shooting Timur. No. It's just you have to make good decisions, uh, good decisions as quick as possible. And while making this decision, you have to take into account every single aspect I mentioned right now. Minimap awareness, map knowledge, which lanes you're covering for that and on what angles you're exposed to. And yeah. So if you have any questions regarding this analysis, just let me know. And just let me know what you think about my thought process in this round in general. Cause well, I'm not saying that I'm a pretty good player, but I mean I know I have some skill, but I wouldn't consider myself being a beast or anything. So just m let me know what you think about my thought process. So, yeah, I got another uh, gameplay breakdown episode. This was speaking of the round before this round was here against FKE again so yeah this round will be up I think tomorrow or Wednesday I don't know but anyways see ya in the next video this is AUTX Pro X and yeah see you in the next video bye